Hello everyone and welcome to my second video on using Excel for engineering. My name is Thomas Taylor and this will be the second lesson in my video series. Today we will talk about making constants in Excel as well as exporting and importing data from other sources. So right now we'll talk about constants. What constants are are defined variable names that will never change. So for instance, we can make a constant such as gravity. If we're staying on Earth, gravity will be 9.8 meters per second squared and it won't all of a sudden change to 15. So we can define that as a constant in Excel so we don't accidentally change that and therefore change all of our calculations later. It's a way to stay safe and make things easy to use. So let's start with this. First of all, let's label what our constants are gonna be. We're gonna define G and we're going to define H. Okay, so we're just going to put those in so other users can know what we're defining. And of course, G is going to be 9.8. And the height, we're going to say we're going to drop a ball from 10 meters. And with that said, let's, let's put some units on this too. So let's say meters per, oops, per second squared. And let's say meters here. And we don't want to use the autofill, so just go ahead and delete that. Now if we click in here, we can rename this as a constant, this, in, this cell itself. And we do that by going up here, clicking the name box, and we're just going to call it G. So now anytime we type G into a formula, it knows that it needs to grab C B1, cell B1 and substitute that value in it. Now one thing to be careful of is that when you name constants, they need to start with a letter, like this, B2. Because if I try and do something like 2H as my cell name, Excel is going to get mad at me. Okay, So make sure that you need to start these out with letters. We're just going to call this H and hit enter. Now let's, uh, let's go over and define some more things. We're going to make some data that we can work with. Let's call this time. And let's put it in seconds. And over here, let's have height. Put that in meters. In time, we're going to want to count from 0 to 1.5 seconds, counting by 0.1 seconds each time. So if you remember from the verse video, the easiest way to do that is to type a 0 here, and then type the next increment. And if you select these two and then scroll down, Excel will recognize it as a pattern, and we're just going to go down to 1.5. Now the height, we're going to type in a formula, and we start that by hitting an equal sign, and we're going to say it's equal to H, which it already knows that it's this cell right here. We're going to say H minus 0 0.5 times G and it recognizes that constant as well, times D3 squared. Hit enter. Now if we scroll this one down, it'll fill in all of our data, and you'll notice in each one it keeps G and H, those predefined constants. All right, now that we have this data, let's go ahead and graph it. So we can select all of our data, we go up to insert, and let's insert a scatter plot and scatter with lines without points. So just this. And that looks like a, a pretty typical curve that you would get for a dropping ball. And then while we're at it, um, let's make sure that we label this so that everyone knows what the graph is. First of all, let's change the series so it's not series one. Let's go to select data, and we're going to edit series one and we're going to change this to height of ball. Okay, okay, and it's changed over here. Now let's go up to layout, and it's already changed the title. If we wanted to change that, we could, we could change the chart title up here. But let's go ahead and change the axis titles. Um, let's do a horizontal one below, and we're going to say that this is time in seconds and let's add a vertical one rotated 
and this is going to be height in meters. Finally, just uh, to spread this out a little bit better, let's take the legend and let's put it at the bottom like that. And that's it.